Well, hello everyone. To our returning audience, welcome back. And to our first time viewers, thanks for being here. Canvas is a concert series that explores the connection between music and the human experience. We create programs that pair live music with art, history, and science. In normal times, we'd be with you in person. But in the meantime, we're glad you're here with us online. Tonight, we get a sneak peek at the life and artistry of touring musician Angie Swan. Angie has shared the world's finest stages with pop icons such as Will I Am, CeeLo Green, and Fifth Harmony. In recent years, Angie has become the guitarist with David Byrne's American Utopia Project. She joins us from New York to talk about music, life, and the importance of diverse investments, both real and metaphorical. But first, a look at some music news. the year that came in like Groban and left like Osborne. Up until March, we're all busy doing what we do, you know, eating inside, touching door handles, breathing on each other. And then overnight, toilet paper became an acceptable birthday present, and an 80-year-old immunologist got nominated for People's Sexiest Man Alive. The music world flipped too. Musicians went from playing Carnegie in Madison Square Garden to playing cars and halls that seat 2,000 plants. Yes, times changed, and it's been hard for everyone. Even if you've been lucky enough to keep your health and your job, 2020 felt like showing up for rehearsal only to find out you're playing a John Adams concert every day for the next 344 days. Schools went online in March, forcing teachers to face the music. In the spirit of camaraderie, they turned to each other, sharing resources to help with the transition. Hey, so as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. Educators report that technical progress in young students is nearly ground to a halt. Instructors are sobbing into their N95, seeing on Zoom that Jimmy's bowl hold now looks like he's headed to Sturgis. And then there are the ensembles. For musicians of all ages, the absence of making music together as a group has been really painful. Directors have taken on the challenge of creating group videos that are now commonplace on the internet to help make us feel better. But there's nothing common about what goes into making these videos. There's cutting, pasting, editing out the barking dog, overdubbing the part that somehow got played in a different key, and in many instances, teaching people how to play to clicks, which adds an additional burden of self-doubt for teachers. How do my students not know how to keep tempo? Where are the metronomes? And at the end of the day, it still may not turn out how you want. Oh, Social distance choir. It's a lot to handle. <laughs> so cheers to all of you music teachers who are sticking to the score. And here's to all the weird stuff you've seen during your Zoom lessons. You know, like Cheeto consumption while playing. People randomly walking into view partially clothed, and a close-up of your students' cats behind. The upside to it all, your relationship with students really matter. Kids are resilient, and pants are optional. Music retailers enjoyed an increase in sales during the pandemic. Acoustic guitars, keyboards, and ukuleles have been flying off virtual shelves for months. Not violas, they're still there. Ah yes, the lure of learning an instrument. The romantic notion of it is as thick as aerosol droplets in a choir room. When you pick up that new instrument, it's like you're sitting next to a stream with butterflies in the air. Oh, is that a deer sneaking up behind you to hear you play? <laughs> Thanks to a discount code at Guitar Center, you're sure you found your once and forever hobby. Oh, your friends may tell you this is just a pandemic thing. Your music obsession isn't going to last. Or they may say that being on furlough shouldn't have meant that you officially quit that job to pursue your lifelong dream of playing oboe in the goth metal band. But you know what I say? I say sit down at that keyboard and play tale as old as time until your neighbors call the police. 
Is the learning curve harder to flatten than the second wave? Absolutely. Will you likely quit by this time next year? Without a doubt. But if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's that you've got to enjoy what you have today. So blow, pluck, and play away, my friends. Carpe Instrumentum. Ah, trumpets, those beacons of musical confidence, the perennial announcers of stuff, are now announcing... Hear ye, hear ye, here comes some COVID. So apparently, forcefully pushing saliva-laced air through a tiny hole while secreting slightly from the nose and eventually dumping a half cup of spit on the floor is not so good in a pandemic. A team of mechanical engineers tested wind players for aerosol spread, and as it turns out, trumpets are the worst offenders. But never fear, thanks to an amazing new invention, these lions of the orchestra remain unfettered and unafraid. That's right, trumpet players, you will remain the fruit of your ensemble's loom. If you buy this mask today, you can make your absence brief. But when you go back to rehearsals, be sure to duck under. Duck under, you say? Under where? Under the radar of spreading droplets by wearing this super weird looking face mask. That's where. So teachers are hustling, instrument sales are up, and inventors are working to get musicians safely back to rehearsal halls. Have I missed anything? Oh, right. The complete abandonment of music performances around the globe causing an entire industry to collapse, careers to be rerouted in the face of music potentially changed forever. Right. I knew I was forgetting something. COVID brain. The list of losses is long. Musicians and venues were forced to rewrite plans or even draft bankruptcy papers. In the U.S. alone, over 170,000 live music-related jobs have been eliminated, and that number is just the tip of Bjork's Icelandic iceberg. Many artists work multiple jobs to make ends meet, and many of those jobs and industries, like hospitality and food services, have also shut down. And common sense tells you that gathering thousands of people to breathe on each other for two hours is going to be the last of our privileges to return. Well, that and shared salad tongs at Chuckaramas. It's going to take a lot of effort to get musical life back on its feet. So when the world reopens, people buy the tickets and go to the show, even if traffic on the 405 is backed up from here to the valley. How things been in this pandemic? I know. I miss live music too, Nodi. What? You were about to go on tour? With Andrea Bocelli? I did not see that coming. Uh, Nodi, does Mr. Bocelli realize that you're not, you know, human in form? I, I mean, no offense. I know you can play well. It's just, you know, maybe he didn't know. Oh, you turned down Taylor Swift for Bocelli? Do you regret that decision? Of course you don't. You're incapable of regret. You don't fret about anything. You're fretless. Well, Nodi, I'm sorry to go, but I gotta wrap up this news segment and so all the people here can get to know Angie Swan. Please say hi to Mrs. The Kitty. Make sure you wash your paws. Two full cycles of happy birthday. Take care of yourself, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, Nodi. In 2019, composer David Lang premiered the following piece, the timing of which would prove beyond ironic. Protect yourself from infection. Keep well and don't get hysterical. Secretions of ours. 
Taleo de la Roca Pita. Beware of those who are coughing and sneezing. Gertrude E. McShane. Avoid crowded streetcars. Elizabeth Frida Norstead. Walk to the office if possible. Mary Margaret Aronson. Edward out of crowds. Julia Stein. George John Maley. Avoid theaters, moving picture shows.
Beyond the cherry popsicle stain on your favorite white t-shirt that is COVID-19, 2020 also showed again that the devastating disease upon which our nation was founded is alive and well. And neither bleach nor vaccinations are going to stop it in its tracks. We're an organization that tells music stories. Canvas is fully aware that entire genres like jazz, blues, and hip-hop came into being to express musically the suppression of black voices and bodies. We're also aware that the long accepted definition of what is exceptional music mostly belongs to a small group of long dead white guys. We're also aware that policies banked against black families make access to instruments and education infinitely more challenging for black kids than for white kids. Canvas brings people together to explore humanity through a musical lens. We consider it a responsibility to seek challenging conversations throughout this musical journey together. We're not going to shy away from talking about race and prejudice, nor are we afraid to question history or the present. And we're still Canvas. We're still the place to laugh and cry and play boom whackers and learn about music and musicians. Like tonight, we've got Angie Swan with us. She's going to share her story of becoming a touring artist giving us a sneak peek behind David Byrne's American Utopia project and talking about the impact of 2020 on her life as a musician. So thanks again for choosing to spend time with us tonight. And now, Angie Swan. <laughs> 